I've only been paying real attention to politics for a few months, but this might be the dumbest thing I've ever seen, at least coming from the Democratic side. And this time when I say Democratic, I mean the full left, not just the far left, which we all get a good laugh making fun of. I mean people all across the left side of the spectrum, at least the ones who either fully participate in or don't passively shun identity politics. I know there's liberals out there that aren't fooled by this, and we all appreciate you for being intellectually honest, so this ain't about you. But it is currently Monday, October 15th, 2018, and if you still support Elizabeth Warren, I cannot imagine how your brain works. So throughout the past couple years, Elizabeth Warren, Democratic Senator from Massachusetts and probable 2020 presidential runner, has made a point of championing her supposed Native American heritage. She's the one Donald Trump famously called Pocahontas, which got everybody all riled up for reasons that in light of Warren's new DNA test no longer make any sense. She took a DNA test to prove her Native heritage, and her result were that she was between 1 512th and 1 1024th Native American, 0.09%. It took two corrections from the publisher of the article to report that they got the math wrong because they initially said it was a lot higher, but it was not. For reference, the average white person of European descent has twice that amount. Elizabeth Warren has less Native American DNA than the average white person. Despite this, she had previously claimed her mother was a Cherokee Indian who had difficulty marrying her husband because of family racism, and a law review piece from 1997 described Warren as Harvard Law School's first woman Woman of color. Woman of color. If Elizabeth Warren is a woman of color, I am a goddamn rainbow. In case you're new here, I'm white. The Cherokee Nation even issued a statement saying that DNA tests are useless in determining tribal citizenship since they don't even distinguish whether a person's ancestors were indigenous to North or South America. The DNA found was a mixture of Colombian, Mexican, and Peruvian DNA specifically, which means she's actually one 1024th colombo mexeruvian which to her credit does sound like a tribe. Add to this that multiple members of Warren's own family dispute her heritage claims, and you have someone who straight up lied about her racial adversities, receive depression bonuses as a result and used them to further her success. Rachel Dolezal is more black than Elizabeth Warren is native, and I don't recall many people supporting her chosen identity, but then you've got the left-wing commentators taking the story at face value, which is Elizabeth Warren takes DNA test, reveals native heritage, which as it's trending right now is exactly how Twitter is reporting it, that's part of the problem. Headlines will report the simplest skewed version of the truth and force you to dig for specifics. Many people People won't dig for specifics, because if the headline reinforces your initial bias, why would you feel the need to dig for specifics? Then they go parrot their confirmed suppositions with the more specific truth unbeknownst to them. Case in point, the Krasenstein brothers, if you're ever looking for left-wingers to make fun of, you can't get much better fodder than those two complete idiots. Brian and Ed, follow them on Twitter, you won't regret it. They're the kinds of people who reply to everything Trump tweets as if they have a one-on-one -on -one audience with him. One of them tweeted reminding people about the video from like a year or so ago where Trump said he'd donate a million dollars to charity if Warren took a DNA test and found Native heritage. But like, based on the results, he could have made that bet with every white person in America and still lost, assuming we agree that 0.18% is enough, which we don't, but even if we did, she fell halfway short of even that tiny benchmark, so it's a stupid premise all the way around. Now they're calling on him to honor that, and while giving money to charity is an overall positive thing to do, relenting to pressure from idiots and legitimizing Warren's status as an oppressed woman of color is not, especially since those rules are not followed elsewhere, even by the people who think it's enough. After all, since Warren is sufficiently Native American enough to be recognized as a person of color by the left, surely they'd have no problem if she were to play a Native American character in a movie or TV show? Yes, she's not an actor, but if 0.09% heritage is good enough to represent yourself as a fully realized member of your culture, that means logically progressives have to shut up about every single instance in history of white people playing Native American roles, because again, the average white person has more native DNA than Elizabeth Warren. That means Audrey Hepburn, Burt Lancaster, Rock Hudson, Rooney Mara as Tiger Lily in Pan, Johnny Depp in The Lone Ranger. Dude, Johnny Depp claimed to have a native great-grandmother, and nobody bought that shit for a second, but Elizabeth Warren goes ten generations back with some 1-1024th bullshit and she's a tribal hero? <laughs> Go fuck yourself. If Trump owes a million to charity, he owes 197 million times a million, whatever that is, because that's the whole white population 
population of the U.S., and I guess we all need to move to a reservation. Then I could make my YouTube name my true Indian name, gather around everyone, and sit crisscross applesauce before Chief Sunburned Albino with the whitest fuck tribe. When it comes to parroting headlines and stuff like this, it occurs to me that a lot of people simply just don't know any better, including celebrities. Like, I saw Jamie Chung retweet that Krasenstein thing about the charity, and I'm like, oh no, please, come on, because I love her. She is the perfect woman in every way, but it really doesn't occur to these people to question anything they're told by who they follow. Liberalism is a cult, and I don't mean that disrespectfully to those of you that consider yourselves liberals. I mean, conservatism is a cult, too. Every way of of thinking can be if you give yourself completely over to it. That's why I say to believe what you believe in moderation. Like there's Christianity, and then there are cults that base themselves off Christianity that become destructive and evil because a certain group of people believed way too hard and focused on certain aspects while ignoring the others, and you should really make sure you're not following one of the cults. Good, well-meaning ideologies can be distorted without those who follow them even realizing that it's happening. So so there's liberalism, and then there are cults of liberalism that purport to have the same values, but twist them into something more and more grotesque over time at a slow enough pace to not be noticed. All of a sudden you went from classical liberal to Antifa event planner, or moderate Republican to proud boy or a member of Kekistan. The point is, check yourself before you keck yourself. Well that's gonna do it for this episode, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did you can like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter, at sunburnedalbino, and you can support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com slash sunburnedalbino, and I'll see you guys next time.